According to U.S. intelligence findings in Ukraine, some 20,000 Russians have fallen since December alone, while 80,000 have been wounded. Most are Wagner Group mercenaries, recruited in prisons in exchange for the promise of release. Meanwhile, the Kremlin to break the stalemate on the front is violating the provisions of international humanitarian law. At Bakhmut, Russian forces used phosphorus munitions. They were banned as a result of precisely the secondary effects of this type of weapon. First of all, all weapons injure the enemy through a flammable substance. But then we also have a secondary effect to so the continuation of fires that prevent aid to the wounded and injured. Russian troops are concentrating forces in the Bakhmut, Avdiivka and Marin sections of the Donbass. Over the past 24 hours in the area, Ukrainians have repulsed some 50 attacks. They storm our positions every day, but we are repelling the attacks. They are attacking from two directions. When we manage to repel them for a while, it is calmer. The effect of suddenly pushing the enemy out of an area area is to condense their forces beyond our reach. That's why enemy shelling has been more frequent lately. The founder of Wagner's group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, has announced that if he does not receive ammunition by May 10th, his mercenaries will withdraw from Bakhmut. He directed the warning to the head of the Russian general staff, General Valery Gerasimov and Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu. The Kremlin is likely to have changed its operational priority from seizing Bakhmut to strengthening the defense line against a Ukrainian counteroffensive, which Kiev predicts will come soon. We all want to see different Vladimir here <laughs> in The Hague. The one who deserves to be sentenced for these criminal actions right here in the capital of the international law. And I'm sure we will see that happen when we win. And we will win. Although Ukrainian forces pushed the Russians out of Kherson last November, the city's residents still feel the presence of the occupiers. The city has been regularly bombarded for months. Yesterday morning, hundreds of cars were driven out of the city. Local authorities have imposed a curfew out of concern for the safety of residents. We know that the imposition of the curfew was necessary. The Russian occupiers know where to strike. They spent nine months in Kherson. They know the layout of the city and where people gather. They target these places specifically. People are stocking up on food, water and fuel. More than 20 civilians were killed on Wednesday alone. So people are not going out because they are afraid of shelling. We are making supplies. Our houses are bunkers. Missiles rained down on the Kherson area yesterday, destroying or damaging a total of 20 homes. Residents of southern Ukraine remember the success of the last counteroffensive and are convinced that the Russian presence on their soil is only temporary. The next campaign could begin as early as in the coming weeks.